Championship Week continues from the scope in Norfolk, Virginia, MEAC style 2017. It's men's action as the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman University ranked number nine as far as the seeds coming in. They take on the Eagles of North Carolina Central University. They are the top seed coming into the tournament. Hello, everyone. Charlie Neal along with my partner. As you look at the banners up here at the Scope Arena, Cy Alexander, the former head coach at North Carolina A&T and South Carolina State. Here's the brackets. How do these teams get here? Well, Bethune Cookman came up with a big win. They're playing North Carolina Central. They knocked off Delaware State. Of course, North Carolina Central being the top seed, they got to buy Cy Alexander. And when you look at these two teams coming in and some of the players that we're going to be really taking a, a very, very hard look at, I'll tell you, it, it, it's anybody's ball game, even though Bethune Cookman comes in as the number nine seed. And the North Carolina Central Eagles are coming off a two game losing streak toward the end of the season something that is not making coach Lavelle Moten very happy but he does have the player of the year in Patrick Cole now when you talk about Patrick Cole let's look at first of all on the other side Brandon Tab is the man that we're going to be focusing on as far as Bethune Cookman is concerned someone that really concerns coach Lavelle Moten coming off a 21.9 rebound game in the first round almost a double double very athletic has un Canny range. He's going to light it up tonight for the Wildcats. On the other side, our player of the year, Patrick Cole, second in the conference in scoring. League leader in assists. He's a, he's a loser. He can do it all, Charlie. Can play one, two, or three. Very much a winner. The leader of the team, the most talented player in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Oh, it should be a good one here. First game of the tournament for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. As we said, Bethune Cookman, they played last night, and they're back in here playing again today. So, back to back games for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. They beat uh, during the regular season against North Carolina Central. I should say they lost that game, that game down in Durham by 15 points, 78 to 63. No rest for the weary, Charlie. No, it didn't. The win over Delaware State that got them here, 69-62, was their first tournament win since 2013 when they upset Norfolk State in the tournament. So here they are in quarterfinal action right now. Winner goes on to play on Friday. The winner of the Hampton-Maryland Eastern Shore game, that'll be a semifinal matchup here at the Scope. The Wildcats are opening up in some sticky man-to-man. -man. High ball screen for Patrick Cole. He draws the foul. And let's look at the lineup for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. We're talking about Madison, Rashawn Madison, Dickerson. That's Delvin Dickerson, Graff, Patrick Coles, and Kyle Benton, the junior out of Long Beach, California. The gray uniforms being worn by North Carolina Central and one score the basket. Strong move inside that time from Delvin Dickerson, the redshirt senior out of Houston, Texas. Nice back screen that time by Patrick Cole to get Dickerson open. So you see the player of the year is not only a good scorer, but a good screener also. And the three point play is complete. Three nothing. The number one team in terms of the seeds and the top seed coming into this tournament. Coming in, Lavelle Moten is the head coach of the Eagles of North Carolina Central. They come in with an overall record of 22 and 8, 13 and 3 in the conference. And this one is going to be North Carolina Central's ball. And what you see, North Carolina Central, their staple, Charlie. People think it's offense, but it's their man-to-man -man team defense. They play on the ball, and they play good weak side help. They're always in position. They do a lot of work in shell drill. When you talk to Coach Lavelle Moten, one of the things he said, the key for him in this game is to defend that three-point line. Right. Because Bethune-Cookman can really put it up. They, they can let it ride. That time, the Wildcats showed a 1-3-1 one, one zone, and Patrick Cole takes it home. He will show a lot of patience off to a very good start as you see they're sticking with that sticky man to man really overplaying shadowing Brandon Tab. 
This is Diamante Lewis with the ball in his hands. Working against Rashawn Madison down the lane. Flips it up. Tried the little alley-oop. A reverse layup falls in for Quentin Forrest. Quentin Forrest had a slow night last night, and he's one of those four-headed monsters that did not get in double figures. Hopefully he can get in double figures today for the Wildcats, sticking with the 1-3-1 zone. He had four points last night, but he also had 11 rebounds. That's what he does. Coming up with the ball for the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats, Brandon Tabb. He's dangerous when he has the man ball in his hands, and Diamante Lewis does a very good job from that point guard spot. They like to run pace and space, get down the floor, space the floor, shoot threes. Down the lane, Lewis gets it back out to Forrest. He goes in, and they're going to call a charge. Great defensive position that time. There's the coach for the Wildcats, Gravel Craig, seventh year as a head man down in Daytona Beach. His team came into the tournament with a record of 9 and 21. They were 6 and 10 against conference opponents. And he's done a very admirable job there. Sticking now, they've changed back to a 3 2, a conventional zone. Down the lane goes Dickerson, and he's fouled going to the rack. Dickinson is off to a good start, got two points early on, and this time, and, and now he got a chance to finish at the uh, at the free throw line. As you look at Lavelle Moten, we talked about Patrick Cole being the player of the year. As we look at this move by Dickerson, and he is fouled as he went inside by Brandon Tabb. But more importantly, Patrick Cole is the third Eagle to garner player of the year honors. The first was the coach Lavelle Moten when they were playing in the CIAA before they transformed their program over to the Mid-Eastern Mid Athletic Conference. The other one was a young man by the name of Jer uh, Jer Jeremy Ingram. So there you've had three players of the year on that central team. <laughs> Ingram put up some threes on me. I know that. <laughs> I don't know about those other two. <laughs> I do know that. That was a nice show and go that last time by Delvin Dickerson. This foul whistled against Patrick Cole. Inbounding the ball is Diamante Lewis. Getting into tap. Little man to man defense now for North Carolina Central. And that's what they do, Charlie. They play excellent as a walking call that time. On Manzi. On Manzi. He took a, that little bunny hop and uh, Terry Moore. Longtime MEAC official was right on this on the money. Our officials tonight, Terry Moore, Everett Summers, and Mel Chetham. Back to the one three one now, Charlie. Changing defenses almost every time down are the Wildcats from Bethune trying to throw the Eagles off rhythm. Great block. Very good block that time by Manzi. Manzi had two points and three rebounds last night, but foul out of the ball game as this rebound by Cole. Bringing it up the floor inside and Dickerson will go to the line once again. Nice pass ahead that time. Patrick Cole to his buddy Delvin Dickerson. That last three by Brandon Tabb. Here's the replay. Nice pitch ahead. He ran the floor very well that time and got a chance for a free throws. Diamante Lewis picks up the personal foul. He was hit when he was fouled, and that's why he's shaking his hand. He was hit on that wrist. Going to the free throw line, Dickerson, who is a 59% free throw shooter. That one rims out. He started, like every, <laughs> started every game. As we look at why he was holding his wrist there and shaking his wrist, so he got hit pretty hard by Lewis. He certainly did. It was on the left wrist, and he's a right-handed, so yeah. that, that helps. Right. <laughs> Five-point ball game right here, right now, 7-2. With North Carolina Central over Bethune Cookman University. A little man to man again being shown by the Eagles. Lewis. The three ball no good that time for Baker. Reggie Baker had a big game as a follow up inside. Let's see. Nice follow that time by Oma Manzi. Did they count the basket? They did count the basket. Yes, they did. And it's a 7-4 ball game. Nice rebound that time. He would not be denied. Rebounded in the crowd. 1-3-1 one, one zone again being utilized by the Wildcats. They talked to 
Coach Lavelle Moten about what is the key as you see Cole inside with the basket. He said his three guards must play well. Talking about Graf. You're talking about Patrick Cole. And, you know, that I mean, those, that, those three people have to play very well for him today. Also, Madison. Deep three that time by DeMonte Lewis. Yeah, there's a timeout on the floor. We have a five-point ball game. The Eagles of North Carolina Central trying to make it to the semifinals of this the 2017 MEAC basketball tournament as championship week continues right here from the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. When these two teams met earlier this year, game won by North Carolina Central by 15, Bethune Cookman shot just 20 percent from three point range, something that they do pretty efficiently throughout the season, normally about 32 percent from downtown. They were out rebounded by 11, 44 33, and went to the free throw line just eight times. So far tonight, Charlie, 0 for 3 from the three. That's a bad sign, but Manzi doing the job on the boards. Inside with the follow up and the rebound and the put back, and he's going to go to the line trying to complete a three point play. And he is just a freshman, Charlie. He's got a bright future in the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. Look at that strong ball fake, strong rebound, right to the rim. And he does complete the three point play, and it's a two point game. Nine to seven here at the Scope in Norfolk. Miak basketball winner goes on to play in the semifinals on Friday, the winner of the Hampton. Merlin Eastern Shore game. Same offensive set that the Eagles used earlier to up screen, get the ball. Nice pass that time. Cole to Kyle Bitton. Finished at the rim with a slam dunk. Junior out of Long Beach, California, Benton with that basket, averaging 29 minutes a game for Lavelle Moten. Not a great score, Benton, only averaging about nine points a game, but we get tabbed with a three ball that time. That's music to Coach Craig's ears. Actually, to it's only two. Well, to see that ball go in the basket for Brandon Tab, that's important for the for the Wildcats to get going. They need him on shooting that ball strong. Down the lane, Dickerson, the tap and the put back. Benton couldn't put it back in. Comes back inside. The Eagles still have it. From the corner, the three ball is good for Rashawn Madison, red shirt senior. And playing in front of the hometown crowd, he is from Norfolk, Virginia. He is one of that three headed monster, Charlie, that Coach Moten talks about Madison, Graft, and Cole. But at the other end, Reggie Baker. Who had a big game in the semifinals or quarterfinals or first round last night had 20 points in I, their win. I think we might have a, a shootout at the OK Corral tonight, <laughs> Charlie. Two point game once again, 14 to 12. But inside, again, there's Benton. The Eagles are doing a great job of interior passing. The big guys are cutting. The perimeter guys are being very unselfish and finding them right at the right time. Reggie Baker gets it across to Lewis. Lewis down the lane, puts it off to the corner from three point range off the back of the iron. It goes for Farts, but Tab hits the three and was fouled. But they didn't call it, so he wasn't fouled. <laughs> he did. I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> and one point ball game here. Four, I thought it was a three, and they only gave him a two. They're sticking right. Let's see what type of defense they, they're. I think they're a soft man. This is big time steal. Two point ball game. In the corner, Reggie Baker, the three. No good. I tell you what, Charlie, as we talked about last night, these Wildcat players don't haven't seen a shot that they don't like. They no. let it ride in transition for sure. Omer Manzi picked up the foul. For the Wildcats, he'll have to go to the sideline 
Brandon Suggs replaces him. You bring in a big freshman for another big freshman. Both of these young men, uh, Suggs and Manzi, have great upsides. Zone offense being utilized right now. Cole spins in the lane. Short. Dickerson to follow. Delvin Dickerson is off to a great start. He's very offensive minded right now, scoring around the basket. He normally just averages eight points, and he's got about six already. And he's only scored 11 points the last two ball games, so he was way down below his season average the last two times these two this team uh, this team played. He's got seven already. The finger roll is good for Dewan Graff. And he is the guy that Coach Moulton says is the glue. He's the leader of the team on and off the court. Second team all-conference. Graff, the reverse, doesn't fall for him. Here comes Patrick Cole, player of the year in the MIAC. Into the corner. The three ball. It's up. It's good for Rashawn Madison. Timeout. Bethune. Nine-point lead just like that. With 11.32 to go in this contest. And it's been North Carolina Central on a roll. It was close just a moment ago. A 9-2 to two run. And we'll be back. We're along with Sy Alexander. Charlie Neal courtside here. Look at number five there, Delvin Dickerson. Seven points for his team. Redshirt senior. Out of Houston, Texas, has started every game for Lavelle Moten and these Eagles of North Carolina Central. Now, only 11 points the last two games, but he has seven already in this contest. Came in averaging 8.1 points per game and 4.5 rebounds. Had a season high 23. That came against Long Island University, Brooklyn, earlier this season, so he can score. Playing like a man on a mission, Charlie. Doesn't want to go home. There's a foul that's going to be on Dickerson, and that will send. Altitort, who just came into the lineup for Bethune Cookman and Coach Gravel Craig to the free throw line. You look at Lavelle Moten. This team is preseason poll was picked to finish fourth in the conference, but they finished first for the third time coming into the tournament as the number one seed, a number one seed for the third time. Coach Moten is a fine young coach. He runs a lot of different things on offense, but his staple is his man-to-man defense and he really knows how to get the ball to his scores. He was a player of the year in the CIAA his senior year at North Carolina Central. Both free throws made by Jeffrey Altador Jr. out of Carl Springs Florida. Well, maybe he just made one according to score. Only one. Wildcats in the wide three two zone. Eagles running in a zone set. They like to do a baseline low screen. And they finally get it to him. It was just a little bit late on the pass from Cole. Battle for the loose ball. Here come the Wildcats. Out the door that's into the lineup. He replaces Diamante Lewis at that point guard spot. Reggie Baker. Got Houston Smith. On the floor now, also for the Wildcats. Shot clock down to 10 seconds now. Out to Dort with the three. Off the mark. Rebound, Madison. Turn around. Cole, good. I, I tell you what, Charlie, the Eagles are playing transition offense, pace and space, pushing it at every opportunity, either passing ahead or pushing it with dribble penetration. That last shot by Al Dort was not the shot I know that Coach Gravel Craig wanted. But what a move inside. They're going to call. Stepped out of bounds. Line. Stepped out of bounds. So that's a turnover for Bethune-Cookman. You know, that toe may have slid on the white. It was close. It was very close. That was the eagle Mel Tenham was right on top of it, so. What a scoop shot that time by Graff. Again, he's Red, the glue. Redshirt senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina. 
one of those junior college transfers and you talk to Lavelle Moten about this team you know he says they're still learning he never thought they would be as good as they are he knew they would be solid but not as good as they were and what he told me was the chemistry the synergy really fell into place they genuinely like each other which is important it certainly is he said they're still learning right they are, they are, the Wildcats now seem to be in a tight overplaying type of man to man. Here's the back screen. Step out. Altador did a great job that time, but he got called with the hook on Patrick Cole. Substitution coming into the North Carolina Central lineup as we look at this right here. There it is. I tell you what, Cole had him hooked too. Yeah, so depending on who gets caught first. <laughs> He's the player of the year. That, that's what that is. Okay. <laughs> this is a one and one situation for North Carolina Central. There's 17 fouls on Bethune, only three team fouls against North Carolina Central. When these two teams played earlier this year, North Carolina Central shot 46% from the field. Second shot is no good. For Cole, who's a 75% free throw shooter, they and shot 33% from three point range and they went to the free throw line 17 times in May 12. So and they now, shot pretty good. Now you see Central has changed their defense, Charlie, for the first time. They come out of the man and they then a wide 1 3 1 trap. Tab shot off the mark. Tab going after the loose ball, saves it, falls over the chairs. And comes back in bounds and is back in the play. And it's good. But it was too little, too late for Tab. And Ron Traps off the bench, the senior out of Lancaster, South Carolina, hits the three. Bethune is becoming unhinged a little bit. The defense is really, look, they're off to the races. And here's Graham finishing at the rim. Nice pitch ahead. And another quick timeout by Coach Craig. Yeah, you have to stop this runaway train. It's a 16 point lead just like that 33 17 with 806 to go here in the first half from the scope in Norfolk Virginia the Eagles trying to punch their ticket to the semifinals of this the 2017 MIAC basketball tournament. Seventeen, you can't tell these kids that this game doesn't mean anything. Look at the hustle by Brandon Tab, who falls all the way over the chairs, jumps back over again. Looks like Superman trying to get back into play, but it was a little too late as Traps hit the big three. Yeah, a little bit too late. Eagles are sticking with this one-three-one half-court trap as it's actually throwing the Wildcats out of the offensive rhythm. Inside tap can't get it to go. And here comes Cole. That's why he's the player of the year. But they call and count the basket. Great move that time by Patrick Cole. Gathered himself, got fouled, took the hit. As you see the replay, he's pushing it. Read the defense. Euro step, kissed it off the glass, finished at the rim. Chance for the. Three point play the old fashioned way. And it's a 36 to 17 ball game, a 19 point lead. It was a nine point lead for North Carolina Central about three and a half, four minutes ago. But since that time, they've gone on a 13 to three run. Sticking and with the 1 3 1, Charlie. Seven and a half to go in the first half. As a foul inside tab getting the pass and he is fouled picking up the foul is Dewan Graf out of bounds only the fourth team foul against the Eagles so you, far tonight and you saw coach Moten teaching Patrick Cole how he wanted him the angle that he wanted him to utilize in the one three one defense now they switch back to a man to man Reggie Baker with a two pointer well you might see him go back to that one three one. <laughs> Since Baker hit that shot. Charlie, 
The Eagles are shooting 65% from the field and 75% from the three. That's why they're leading 36-19. From the corner, Cole short. But they get the offensive rebound, and it's going to be out of bounds. That was Will Ransom, the senior, wearing number 42, is in the lineup now. Started 15 games for the team. Did not uh, have a great showing the first time these two teams met. Did manage to grab one rebound, and he had one there. Right, he's a big, another big body. They play the four and five position by committee, Charlie. They use Benton, Dickerson, Ransom. Yeah, Ransom's at 6'8", and Benton's at 6'7". And that one falls. There's the glue. Yeah. We always, have to, have, we always <laughs> have to have glue, right? Yeah, that's it. That's, that's Mr. Graft. Back to the 1-3-1, one, one, Charlie. And Man. you know, you sometimes when you look at a game as Tab shoots from the corner, doesn't fall, and the rebound pulled down by Ransom. This Bethune-Cookman team played last night. North Carolina Central has been off. Do you think that has an effect on what's happening? Well, that's one of the reasons almost every opportunity for the Eagles, they're pushing it. They're pushing it. They're pushing it. They know that the Wildcats had to play a game last night. Their legs might be just a little bit weary, and the Eagles are really pushing it. Thirty eight nineteen the score these two teams met earlier this year was a 15 point win by the Eagles of North Carolina Central who started the season 0 and 2 won six of their next seven games lost two straight twice and coming in to this tournament they're on a two game losing streak. They but, do the not, but the three conference losses that they suffered this year were by a total of seven points. So they could have very well gone unbeaten this year. I tell you what, they look a lot better than the last time I saw them against North Carolina a There you go, pushing it again. They lost that last game by of the season against AT, and Graf picks up the foul and trying to complete the three point play. Patrick Cole, Charlie, is showing his versatility, not only as a scorer, but he is. Being the facilitator in the offensive transition game, finding Dewan Graft for when well, he missed the free throw, but had a chance for another three point play. Every shot is out of transition offense. Early offense is what you call it. Battle on the floor, the loose ball ahead, wide open for two. It's cold. They look like the regular season champs right now. Yeah. They put an expl exclamation point on it, aren't they? they? They are. Wide, nice pass inside, and Tab just couldn't finish. Off to the races again, go to Eagles. Ransom. Cole, back to Ransom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't be so mean, young fella. Throwing it down with authority. And a teaching moment again by Coach Lavelle Moten. He's got those Eagles soaring. Let's watch it once again as they come down the floor and they give it to the big fellow, Mr. Ransom out of Fort Worth, Texas. What? You hate to see a team get blown out, but you also enjoy the artistry of what North Carolina Central has been able to do. Charlie, the thing that's sticking out to me right now. Patrick Cole, four assists, zero turnovers. Eagles seven. And to how two. many points? And seven points. And seven points. You know he's gonna get his points, but <laughs> he's sharing the basketball, and that's impressive. Finding the open man there, really pushing the, pushing the button. Well, you talk about his assists. When these two teams played earlier this year, he had 13 points, five assists, or five rebounds rather. And 11 assists. So therefore, he does distribute the ball. He's not selfish. Right. He, that's why he was the player of the year. He he's the most talented player in the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference. Tab shot just wouldn't fall. Off Ransom the, with the rebound. Off to the races. Here they come. Graf loses the ball, but is picked up. Cole from the corner, short. That probably wasn't the shot that Coach Moat wanted. Reggie Baker now down the baseline. The reverse layup won't fall for Forrest. 
They're going to stay on the Bethune Cookman in. Substitutions coming in. For both of these squads. This is the fourth time that Lavelle Moton's teams have won 20 games in a season. 2012 and the 13, they went 22 and 9. From 13 to 14, they went 28 and 6. And two years ago, they were 25 and 8. This year, 22 and 8, 13 and 3 in the conference. That's a great testament to the program building ability of Lavelle Moton because obviously there were turnovers in, in, during those years of, of different groups of players. Finally, the uh, Wildcats get a basket. Quentin Forrest comes up with that basket. And you know, you talk about people have had those 20 win seasons. That's the 19th time in the school's history that they've had 20 win seasons. John McClendon did it four times as a coach. And of course, we know he's a Hall of Famer. Nice move inside. Reggie Baker puts it up for two. The Wildcats finally got some transition. This, this is what they want to do, and they've been stymied today because of the great 1 3 1 trap being utilized by the Eagles. High ball, screen, and roll. Ransom. Nice delivery that time. Screen and roll. Pinpoint delivery. Dunk. Is the and result. A, and a 23 point lead for the Eagles. Reggie Baker spinning. Back outside. Atheldor. Down the lane and a foul will whistle and send Quentin Farris to the free throw line. There's a timeout on the floor. And a 23 point lead for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. They have not been in danger at all in this contest. Looking to get to the semifinals on Friday here as championship week continues from the scope in Norfolk and Big Ransom continues to impress. Bethune Cookman cheerleader is hoping their team can rally. They're down 23 right now at the scope in Norfolk, and we have free throws forthcoming for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman as Quentin Forrest will step to the line. He's a 49% free throw shooter, but had four points and 11 rebounds against but against uh, Delaware State yesterday in that 69 62 victory. When these two teams played earlier this year Quentin Forrest wound up with 10 points and five rebounds. He's a solid contributor. He's part of that four headed monster that uh, coach Craig likes to talk about Wildcats uh, sticking with a soft uh, three two zone. Eagles running some shot clock using some hollow action that time isolating Cole at the top. Ransom with the rebound on the offensive end. They'll, the shot clock is at five seconds and bumped. And we're going to have free throws forthcoming for Dewan Graff. And one of the things that Coach Moten told me earlier, he says, you know, Patrick Cole, of course, he's the player of the year. But he's had to step up tonight. Right. He's the go-to guy. Uh, he said he can't be the. I think Coach Moten put it best when he said to me, "I told him he can't be the man when you want to be the man. You have to be the man when you need to, to be, be the, the man. Without a question. <laughs> if you're the man. If you're the man. Right. If you're the man. <laughs> and tonight he is showing yes, that did. he is the man. He also said Madison must make some shots also tonight. And he's two for three right now from the three line. And from the corner, there's Quentin Forrest. That last time, the Eagles showed some two three zone for the first time. And Wildcats did a good job of picking it apart. Got a nice, nice delivery pass to uh, Quentin Forrest. High ball screen, either way, horns action. Pop Cole out. And it's calling for the ball screen. Five seconds on the shot clock. Here's Cole measuring back of the iron. It was a good looking shot off his hands. Here's Reggie Baker off the iron. No good. 
And it's going to stay on Bethune's end. Checking back into the North Carolina Central lineup is Kyle Benton. Redshirt Jr. as Ransom takes the seat on the bench for the Eagles. Ransom put in quality minutes. He certainly did. Chance for the Wildcats to score two in a row for the first time in a long time. Eagles back to man to man. Down the lane. That's going to be a blocking foul. But he wasn't shooting. But they're going to call a block. Even though the player kind of went in under, out of control, I would think. He got bailed out. <laughs> Said I think he was inside the. That's not the point. He, he, he passed the ball off. <laughs> so they, they're giving him what was one and one or two shots. It is one and one. And, and that's Diamante Lewis at the line. 17 points, six rebounds, four assists. The first time these two teams met, he had 19 points against Delaware State last night. Seven rebounds and five assists. And he finally got off a goose egg in this half with only 148 to go. And he had a great game last night. He's going to need another one tonight. And the lead is cut to 18. They led by as many as 23 in this game. That is North Carolina Central. Wildcats showed a little one one three that time. Great job of penetration. Errant pass. Guys and on the floor. Alternating possession arrow will favor Bethune. Oh, he got a timeout. Oh, he got a timeout. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a it was a hell ball, but they're gonna call a tie timeout. That is a smart move by the Eagles. Smart play by senior. I think it was Devon Graft who realized the Possession arrow might have been going the other way, and, and he got the timeout quickly. So now, with nine seconds left, the uh, Central Eagles have a chance to uh, get a shot off. Now, this North Carolina Central team, not only the number one seed coming inside, but they're ranked in the top category, top of four categories as far as the conference is concerned. They're ranked second in scoring offense. When averaging 74 points a game, first in scoring defense, only giving up 64 points a game. They lead the conference in rebounding, averaging 38.5 rebounds a game, and they lead the conference in field goal percentage at 45%. That's why they were 13 and 3. <laughs> it could have been 13 of uh, 16, 16 and 0. And 0. <laughs> Off the glass, no good. Battle for the loose ball. Here come the Wildcats of Bethune. Alsa Dort with the ball into the front court to Reggie Baker. He was doing a good job of getting back in transition. Nice move by Baker. Big time Euro step by Reggie Baker. 16 point game now. One minute to go before the break. Here at the Scope in Norfolk, Virginia. We're part of Championship Week along with Cy Alexander, Charlie Neal, and we're courtside. Hope you're enjoying it. Inside, Benton. Good pass from Graf. Eagles needed that. Basket to stop a semi run by the Wildcats. Nice show of patience on offense that time. Travel by Diamante Lewis. Suffered his feet before the pass off to Quentin Forrest. And, and that turnover gives the Eagles a chance to maybe get the last shot of the uh, first half. Well, it's about five second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Now we know there's been a big deficit for Coach. Gravel Craig and his Bethune Cookman Wildcats at halftime. They've still got another 20 minutes of basketball and 35 seconds left. You're going into the locker room in 35 seconds. What are you saying to your team if you're in that position, coach? What you want to do is have the deficit cut to single digits by the 10 minute mark of the, of second, the second half. half. That's your goal. And you don't, that way you just play one basket at a time. You're down 18 right now, but you need a stop right here. You don't want a momentum. If you get a stop, that's a momentum builder. If Central scores, that's a momentum builder on the other side. Right. Well, one of the things, like you said, if you can make a stop here and then maybe set Potential up something score, and score right. down the other end. That would be huge. In, in what is now an 18-point ball game, 50-32. to 32. Central led by as many as 23 here in the first half. 
Look for a high ball screen for Graft. There's the screen. Space the floor. Long shot. Back of the iron. Bitten with the rebound. Going back up. It's blocked. Knocked away. By Suggs. And no basket. So as they go to the locker room, it's been all North Carolina Central here in the first half of this MEAC basketball tournament action from the scope in Norfolk, Virginia. Even though Central gave up a couple baskets, they were relentless on the offensive side. Back with more halftime activities from the scope in Norfolk, Virginia in just a moment. Fifty to thirty two as we get ready to start the second half along with Cy Alexander Charlie Neal courtside here when you look at some of those stats one of the things that side that really impressed me was the fact that only two turnovers for North Carolina Central in the first half as fast paced as the game was that's awesome that's unbelievable to be honest with you two things stand out the fact that it's 11 assists only two turnovers for the North Carolina Central Eagles. And on the flip side of that, Bethune Cookman is only shooting two for 13 from the three for 15%. And they live by the three shot, Charlie. They certainly do. They will came into the game averaging 32% from downtown. So let's see what Gravel Craig was able to motivate his team with at halftime and see if it works here in the second half. On the other side, Lavelle Moten has to guard his team or make sure his team is guarded, not to be too confident exactly. and let this get away from them. Not, do not come out flat. First five to six minutes is very, very important, in particularly for the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. You know, there's an opening right down the street in an ACC school, and North Carolina State has a job opening, and Lavelle Moten's name has come up as a possible candidate for that job as a quick basket inside right away by Manzi gives Bethune Cookman the first basket of the second half nice, nice high ball screen that time by the Wildcats your thoughts on that possibility I, I think Lavelle should get an opportunity to be considered for that job he's done an admirable job plus Charlie he beat North Carolina State several years ago and he beat Missouri this year right <laughs> so they've had some big wins you know, it's interesting because we talk about the fact that two years ago they were in the tournament. They were number one seed again. They got upset by Delaware State in the tournament. We wound up having to go to the NIT where they lost to Miami. I believe that was 75 71 or something like that was the final score there. But that loss in the tournament when they lost to Bethune here uh, snapped a nine game winning streak for the, the Eagles of North Carolina Central. So Coach Moten is very well aware of what can happen. Just because you're the top seed doesn't mean anything is we get the three ball from the corner from Rashawn Madison. Great ball movement that time versus the two three zone that was utilized by the Wildcats. Both teams get early baskets out of the gate in the second half. Eagles showing man to man. Bethune is running a what they call a horn set where you have two potential screeners. You got the big fella opening the post. They just didn't give it to him. Reggie Baker had the ball knocked away from him. Here's Patrick Cole. Scored a basket. And Diamante Lewis. It, that was very close to a travel. And I, and I tell you what, Charlie, we had a we used to have a rule when I was coaching. We called it the no layup rule. And right here, if you're gonna foul the guy, foul he fouled him. It. Yeah, he actually fouled it. But <laughs> don't let him get it up. And then now you get a three-point play, and that's back up to But they didn't call it a shooting foul, so okay. But it was a foul, but they did not call it in the act of shooting. But they still hit the three. Right. <laughs> Reggie Baker spins, puts it up. He's foul. Bethune Cookman has got to show discipline on both ends of the court. They've got to stay together right now. They've got to have leadership from people like Brandon Tab and Reggie Baker, De Diamante Lewis. These guys have got to stay focused. One play at a time, try to get the lead down in the single digits by the 10 minute mark. That should be their goal. Reggie Baker at the free throw line. 
He had 20 points against Delaware State in first round action. He has nine points so far tonight. And make it 10 for him. So Reggie Baker, the senior out of Avon Park, Florida. The person that they're not getting the performance they need from tonight, to be quite honest with you, is Brandon Tabs. He's got to get it going. He only has five points. He had 21 points against Delaware State. He only had eight points when those two teams met earlier this year. So maybe it's something in the water that <laughs> North Carolina Central is, is giving him. I tell you, it's working. Central utilized that back screen again, dive play. Kyle Benton just missed the layup. Good screen set by uh, Patrick Cole. Cole with the rebound and a missed shot. Off Central to the races. running. And they're going to call Reggie Baker with a trip. Those kind of passes in transition, Charlie. You watch this, he bounces it. It's better for a big guy if you throw it up. It's easier for him to step up and hold his hands. It's almost like being a wide receiver versus throwing it off the bounce and he's got to reach down. That makes it very difficult. Fortunately for the Eagles, they got a lucky kickball. Side ball screen, second screen. Graf. Nice pass in the side, and Benton finishes it. Poor weak side rotation by the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. That play took forever to develop, and he was still wide open. <laughs> ball saved in bounds. Feed inside, and Tab finishes it. For Brandon Tab. But Bethune to get back in this game, Charlie, they've got to do a much better job defensively. They've got to get the, give the Eagles one shot and one shot only. And they've got to have everybody communicate. And hope the shot doesn't go in. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then go down the other right. end and, and score make one. yourself. Right. You can't trade baskets. No, not, a, not being down 20. That math just don't work. You'll still be down 20. The turnaround jumper is good. And that is Delvin Dickerson. Found a soft spot in the zone that time, right around the MEAC logo, right in the lane. Nice little 10 foot jump shot by Dickinson. Pull back jumper, good for Diamante Lewis. That's his fifth point of the night. Thune seems a little bit confused as to what type of defense they're I know in. he was looking over Coach Craig on the sideline. His cold shot, no good, but the follow-up inside was good for Benton. Benton right there on the glass. Poor block out that time. They, they better do a better job of communicating and everyone being on the same page right now for and the now Wildcats. 22-point lead now for North Carolina Central, as you said. There's a turnover. Wide open. Showtime. <laughs> Delbert Dickerson, 24-point lead. Not the start that the Wildcats wanted, Charlie. This is their biggest lead of the night. And a foul is going to be whistled, and that'll send Diamante Lewis to the free throw line. You can see the body language of the Wildcats. It's not where you want it to be as a coach. And Coach Lavelle Moten, not happy with some of the play of some of his players. He's giving them those, they call it down the country. Yeah, as, they come down to the, the country. as they come to yeah. the sideline. <laughs> a 24 point advantage for the number one seed. Back in a moment. Sander, the former North Carolina A&T and South Carolina State coach and Tennessee State coach and former assistant at Howard University coach. Been and, around. <laughs> Charlie Neal here. We're courtside in what has been a all North Carolina Central evening as Diamante Lewis is at the free throw line for Bethune Cookman, the Wildcats, who got here by a win over Delaware State last night. Their first tournament win since 2013 when they upset Norfolk State in overtime in the quarterfinals before losing to Morgan in the semifinals. And they're in danger of uh, being eliminated here for North Carolina Central with the big lead. And the winner of this particular game goes on to play in the semifinals on Friday against the UMES. 
Hampton University winner as Patrick Cole, the player of the year, hits the two pointer. Nice pull up jump shot that time by Patrick Cole. A lot of patience being utilized by the Eagles. Tab could not control the rebound and loses it out of bounds. And the Eagles, Charlie, had shown no sign of being rusty. Again, they look like the regular season champs that went on a 13 game winning streak throughout the season tonight. High ball screen, pin down, weak side, curl. Norfolk State will play the next game here tonight. They will go up against South Carolina State, the Bulldogs. There's Tab. He misses it. Boy, he's just off. Isn't he, he is really, really off, and they need him, Charlie. You're talking about a young man that averages 18 points, and right now he has a total of seven. Nice finish at the rim that time by Patrick Cole. And the lead is the biggest of the night, 27 for North Carolina Central, and it's all North Carolina Central. One and done for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman for the most part. Ahead to Tab. Nice follow and block from behind, but Lewis is there for the follow. Johnny on the spot that time for Diamante Lewis, but great block by Kyle Benton. He was slowing the pace a little bit and going to utilize some shot clock. The 25 point lead probably won't shoot for about 12 seconds. He'll get a high ball screen at some point. A one four set versus the two three zone. It was a foul hand check on the outside. That's the another foul. As we look at points in the paint, one of the things that Lavelle Moten was talking about to me earlier was the fact that Bethune does a very good job of putting the ball down low and getting points in the paint. And they've done a good job of defensing that this evening. Right now, 42 to 20 points in the paint, obviously in favor of the Eagles. Nice set that time. It was a double high screen penetration and look for the lob by the Eagles. Turnover. Unbelievable, Charlie. And didn't see the ball coming. That was Madison went off of his heel on the pass. He was already down the floor planning his next strategy <laughs> as Houston Smith is in the lineup for. Bethune Cookman Altador also in there has the ball in his hands driving around the right side and he is foul. Did they call it shooting. Yes. Two shots. So the winner of this game goes on to play. In the University of Maryland Eastern Shore Hampton winner. They play tomorrow that game. In the semifinals would be played here on Friday. This year during the regular season. North Carolina Central beat Maryland Eastern Shore, Shore twice. 69 52 and 82 69. Well, they also beat Hampton at Hampton 64 to 51. So my, they had to they went, beat both teams throughout the season. My coaching philosophy, and I think I shared this with you early on, is if you can beat a team three times during the course of the season, you're better than that team in that particular year. And uh, right now, if you win today, you get tomorrow off to get ready for the semifinal action on Friday. So the best position to be in is playing on Wednesday, isn't it? Exactly. The number one or two seed in, the, in Norfolk the, State's the exactly. other one. Exactly. In the years that I've been fortunate enough to win this tournament, we always played on Wednesday, got lucky and won on Wednesday, and were able to play on Friday, get that day off on Thursday. I thought that was a big advantage to do that. And you only have to play two games. Exactly. And you get that day <laughs> rest before you get ready to play the two games. And they, again, they came out with no jitters. They came out on a mission, Charlie. Shot Set, clock down to 10 seconds. 71 to 45, 1142 to go. In and out the shot that time for Quentin Forrest. Behind the back, over in the corner. The three ball measured and it's good. 
Coming up with that one is Ron Trapp, senior out of Lancaster, South Carolina. Did not score against Bethune Cookman. And he's three for three tonight. Earlier Charlie. this year, yeah. Had 18 points against Coppin as a season high earlier this season. 74 50 45. We got a player control foul. The Wildcats are becoming unhinged right now. 29 point lead for the Central Eagles. Trying to punch their ticket to the next round. The winner of the whole tournament goes to the NCAA tournament. 45 our score 29 point lead for the Eagles of North Carolina Central side when you look at of course the winner of this tournament goes to the big dance. Who do you think was the first team to punch their ticket this year in the in, in, in the nation. It was uh, Jacksonville State of you the Ohio know, Valley. You know about exactly. Them. Yeah. Uh, and they were not picked to win it. They're the first team to punch the ticket. They finished the season. I mean they surprised a lot of people. I think they had a 20 and 14 overall record and they weren't picked to do anything this year were they Ray Harper former coach division two coach at Kentucky Wesleyan uh, got the got a charge right No, we got a block don't we but uh, Ray Harper first year at Jacksonville State done a tremendous job wherever he's gone now taking the Jacksonville State University team to the big dance they finished nine and seven in the OVC. How tough is that conference? It is very comparable to the Mid East and Athletic Conference. Having coached in both leagues, you've got very good teams at the top and just average teams at the bottom. Belmont is one of the better teams in that league on a consistent basis. Belmont and Murray State. I was blessed to have beaten both of them during my time at uh, TSU and they also beat me pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> what goes around yeah, comes around. Yeah, no huh? question. No question. <laughs> and uh, I want to say uh, congrats out to Dave Luce who was the former head coach at Austin P. He's battling the cancer right now. He just retired from Austin P longtime legendary coach at, at Austin P. You know one of the things you said in the first half was Bethune had to get this game in single digits by the midway point of the second half. Yeah. Instead of getting it in single digits, right. they almost got it in right. triple digits. Right. See, he's trying that new math. He got, I need to talk to him. He, he's got it reversed. He said, well, we, we, we can be down by 30 with 10 minutes to go. Now we got a shot. No, no, it doesn't work like that. You need to be down by 10. It was 18 point right. halftime lead, and now it's a 29 point yep. lead. And he just got called for traveling. They, they have, they're coming unhinged, and, uh, you know, when uh, I was coaching Charlie you know you had the coaches stand up and stand up and you're coaching at about the uh, the eight minute mark of this kind of game I just sit down you know and say okay let's run this thing on out. Yeah not much you can do is Dude. it. Nine forty five the time remaining in this contest. Perfectly executed play from the back screen standpoint poor execution as far as the lob, as far as the pass was concerned he was wide open and Charlie you said something to me two nights ago you said sometimes you get the bad sometimes, sometimes the bad gets you and this is a bare night isn't <laughs> it? it was a bad <laughs> night you know it's a great story about North Carolina Central the, the fact that back in 1944 that was when it was a, a time of heated racial segregation that the men's basketball team from North Carolina Central competed against a squad from Duke University. Exactly. Uh, you know that story. The secret game. It was a secret game, uh, and due to the illegal nature of the contest, you know the participants were sworn to secrecy. They couldn't couldn't tell anybody what was going on. The gyms gym doors were locked. Duke players came over to North Carolina Central's campus and played that game. Right. Uh, I have the book. It's called The Secret Game. Eagles won that game right 88 44 John McClendon was coaching the one team and it was a banner year for Central in, in basketball that year 1944. They'd lost only one game all season long and John McClendon at that time was what about 28 years old and you know he's been in, inducted into the Hall of Fame once he's getting ready to get inducted once again. I tell you what there was a 
one of the big honors of my life when I got a chance to spend time with uh, Coach McClendon. He came to several of my practices when I was the head coach at Tennessee State University. And he sat down and we talked basketball and we talked life more as much as anything. Great honor to, to meet him. Well, he was a great person. I had a chance to travel over to Europe with him with a select basketball team. Oh, okay. We went to Paris. Uh, uh, we, we went to Paris, France, and then we went around and we took this these team, the team, to different cities in France. We spent about 10 days over there and uh, just had a great time with him and the group of young men that we took over there to play some of the, the teams in Europe. Well, he, he was well respected, and, uh, you know, Dean Smith. And I respect the late Dean Smith as one of the great basketball coaches growing up in North Carolina. I used to watch his coaches show every Sunday. And you know he got a lot of credit for introducing the uh, four corners. But he actually got it from Coach John McClendon. If, 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 I, if I'm correct in, in what I'm saying, and I think I am, based on what my knowledge of what I've been reading, right now the, the uh, Eagles are just running the clock down. And We got a wet spot on the floor here, Charlie. I don't want anybody to get slipped. Well, what in. happened was the player with the ball, that's Graf, slipped when he was coming across dribbling the ball. And Mel Chellum, the referee, happened to see what was going on and he stopped play just for everybody's safety. I remember doing a game some years ago uh, in January in New Orleans at Dillard University. They have a natatorium within their facility, athletic facility. And it became, became very warm that day on the outside as Louisiana has a tendency to get in the 70s. And the floor was so slippery, it was like an ice skating rink, but it was water. Mm -hmm. It was water that had settled on the floor that the players and the referees were falling down, going up and down the floor to the point where they just can't cancel the game. Wow, <laughs> wow. That, that was a good bit of officiating by Mel because you don't want to see anybody get hurt on uh, something that could be prevented. So a nice bit of officiating uh, as uh, you have a 26 point lead by the Eagles with 847 to go and high ball screen action. Eagles doing a great job of running the offense right now. And Cole went to the rack and he'll go to the line. Patrick Cole the player of the year out of Newark New Jersey. He had 14 points 12 rebounds he had a triple double this year and 10 assists against Jackson State earlier this season. One of the things that in talking with coach Moten about uh, uh, Mr. Cole he said coach he is my most talented player but because he has been to three schools in four years and he really has never he's kind of a work in progress as you talk about being a winner and he's he's realizing now that it's not about me but it's about we and he's having so much fun this year you know being the player of the year I'm sure was gratifying but the fact that the, the Eagles won the league is probably even more and got a chance to take this thing all the way to the NCAA tournament and he came here from Siena College to North Carolina Central like you said he's been around the horn <laughs> he actually started for Fang Mitchell at Coppin Coppin State yeah you know that's one of Fang's fertile recruiting grounds was the New Jersey area so what was uh, that 13 years ago <laughs> <laughs> hasn't he used up his yeah. eligibility <laughs> you know I wasn't gonna say nothing to Moulton about that but well, you said when you said Fang Mitchell <laughs> Bang has a coach to the wild. <laughs> He's been around. I tell you that. Mr. Graff from Charlotte, North Carolina. Have to check, check his birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> he might be 52 yeah, years old. I know. <laughs> a 30 point lead once again for North Carolina Central. 80 to 50. With under 8 10 to go, and a foul is called. Nice high ball screen and roll that time. And you got Rodney Ross at the line. And he's trying to get off the donuts. It's 0 for 1 now. Defense, 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 defense. 
makes 0 for 2. Still on the donuts. None. <laughs> <laughs> Eight minutes to go in this one, and it's been central all the way. They led by 18 at the half, 50 to 32. Have increased the lead by 30 here in the second half. And the, they will go on to play the winner of the Maryland Eastern Shore Hampton game. And now it's a 32 point lead. I tell you what, they look sharp tonight. They've done everything correctly, shooting 57% from the field, 47% from the three. 73 percent from the free throw line and there's a three pointer for Hasu Salam for Bethune Cookman. Eagles using shot clock. They won't even try to score until it gets around the 12 second mark. Run their famous weave. Oh turnover. And there's a three ball. Again, Salam comes off the bench. Where was he earlier? <laughs> I know where he should have been. <laughs> so now a timeout call with 647 to go. And Coach Moten, his team. Trying to not let this one slip away, especially with Salam coming off the bench and hitting back to back threes. Right. 82 56 is our score here from the scope in Norfolk. The gentleman on the right is here because Norfolk State is about to play South Carolina State. Now, the lady on the left, which is probably his wife, is a Hampton grad. You notice it's the family thing. And Hampton plays tomorrow, so she's coming in support of her husband tonight. Hopefully, he comes to support her tomorrow. Right, and they <laughs> and they will be at odds if it gets to the championship game. And that's the way it is with families in the these conferences. I went to Hampton, my spouse went to Norfolk, or whatever. And <laughs> there you have it. There you go. 82-56 is our score. Right here. And of course, as we said, coming up later tonight, Norfolk State and South Carolina State right here as championship week continues. But Phil Cookman just didn't have an answer so far tonight for this Eagle team who was soaring high. And they soared from the opening opening tip. And we're gonna step aside. We'll be back with more from the scope at Norfolk in just a moment. If this score holds up with the Eagles leading 82 56 Lavelle Moten will be seven and four as you look at Bobby Collins Maryland Eastern Shore they play Hampton tomorrow he's out scouting because if he wins against Hampton he may meet one of these teams in the championship I tell you what he's done a great job with the University of Maryland Eastern Shore Hawks and uh, like I said he's scouting there's a Deep shot again by Salam, but it was an air ball this time. Moten trying to go seven and four in the tournament as a coach. Last year, you know, talking about turning a program around, they only won 12 games all season long. They were seven and nine in the conference, seventh place. And uh, what a difference a year makes as Madison hits the three ball. That was great execution that time. You had a high ball screen, then you had a weak side pin down and throw it back on the weak side away from the action. And Madison came off, great shot preparation, caught it in rhythm, knocked a nice looking three point shot down. Again, that one doesn't fall for Salam. Came off the bench and hit two back to back threes, but has missed the last two attempts he's taken. I think Coach Moten did a really good job in calling that quick timeout after Salam hit two threes in a row because he saw his team getting complacent. Eagles again using a lot of shot clock won't even start to play until about 10 seconds. Here we go. High ball screen and roll. This is Wiggins down the lane spins gets it back out the three ball for Madison off the mark and the follow Benton couldn't get it to go down a whole new 30 seconds utilizing shot clock under five minutes to go. They won't start anything Charlie 
until about the 10 to 12 second mark. Double high screen. Cole bumped, puts it up, and Altador draws the foul. They're getting any and everything that they want on the offensive end, and it's been like that the entire game. And as you look at the stat line, one of the big disappointments for the Wildcat Cats have to be Brandon Tab. So far tonight, Charlie's three for 12 and only delivered on one for six from the three line, giving him seven points. Now, he has rebounded the ball. He's got seven rebounds, but uh, they needed his offensive productivity. He was their leading scorer coming into the tournament, 18 points a game, had 21 points in their first round game when they beat Delaware State. He also had nine rebounds to go with those 21 points. So production not there for Mr. Brandon Tab, which is a concern of your coach uh, Moten coming in because Tab is capable <laughs> of, of being very dangerous. Without a question, we saw that uh, good defense being shown by Man to man, good block, big time block that time by Delvin Dickerson. Will Ransom in the lineup right now for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. Look at that block there. Dickerson going up high. Don't bring that weak stuff in here, <laughs> young fella. And for his efforts. Here's Brandon Tab sitting on the bench. Has to be a disappointing light for him, but he is he's back. He's from Hampton, Virginia. He's a local kid. Went to Kinkatan High School here. Started his college career at Central Florida. And uh, he's he's just a junior, so he'll be back next year. So we're getting some bench players coming in for North Carolina Central. John Guerra just checked in off the bench. And this is a young man probably sees a lot of playing time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but with 420 to go, Coach Moten decides to bring in some other people. Let them play. He's, he's, he's put up the white flag and letting uh, Coach Craig know you can put your subs in now because I'm putting my guys in. Guerra has played in uh, nine games this year. Started none, averaged just about 1.7 minutes per contest. And it's going to stay on Bethune's end of the floor. I tell you what, we're looking at a 32 point deficit right now. And, and this uh, place is filling up, Charlie, with uh, a lot of green and gold. A lot of Spartan fans coming down to see their team. There's a three ball there. Salam once again. He's hit three threes in this game. All off the bench. That's where he got his nine points. And one of the things that uh, in talking with Coach Craig is the Wildcats have had to play all season, Charlie, without Jordan Potts. Yes, he, they did. He was their leading scorer from a year ago. Young man uh, who played at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. But he broke his foot during the summer. And uh, it never really healed, so they're hoping to get a. They've applied for a waiver of medical red shirt to get another year. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Diamante Lewis had to take up the slack. 88-59, the score with North Carolina Central leading Bethune Cookman. And I know Coach Craig is uh, very disappointed in the performance. That his young men put on today, and uh, you know you got to live to fight another day. But in tournament play, you don't get another day. It's survive and advance, and now you just worry about where you're going next week on the recruiting trail. And that'll be the case, Charlie, for every team in this tournament except the winner. And you may get, if for some reason the Eagles don't win the tournament, they'll be headed to the NIT. And then you may get a possible one or two teams getting a bid to the uh, CTI tournament like they did last year. You were talking about Jordan Potts and that broken foot that he suffered, you know, earlier this year. And uh, one of the things Diamante Lewis had to step up big and learn that point guard spot that Jordan Potts was so ably able to handle. Right. And, uh, you know, it's it's been a, a different look. 
for the Wildcats, but uh, Diamante Lewis, and as, as the coach likes to call him, that four-headed monster, Reggie Baker, Quentin Forrest, and Brandon Tabb, they all did an admirable job for the Wildcats this year. So Guerra is going to the free throw line. He's three for four this season. Make it four for five. Looks like he's got a nice stroke. He's right right from the uh, near the Durham area, Cary, North Carolina. And I know this is a big moment for John. Step up to the line and knock a second one down. He, the fans just gave him a nice applause, the Eagles fans that are here. The lead is 30 once again with under three minutes to go. Winner plays on Friday in the semifinals against the winner of tomorrow night's game between Maryland Eastern Shore and Hampton as championship week continues from here in Norfolk Virginia and we're going to get a charge or a block. Restricted area right he was in the he was inside the circle CJ Wiggins taking the ball to the rack and. Uh, CJ. Is. Uh, Sophomore out of Richmond. Right. He's got a chance to get on the on the scoreboard. On the scoreboard. He's uh, zero for zeros across the board, but uh, he's played well during his career at uh, North Carolina Central. CJ, he's just a sophomore. Right. And uh, in talking with uh, Coach Moulton, they feel like, you know, he's he's the heir apparent to the point guard position. They they signed a very good player out of Greensboro. Reggie Perkins played for the number one high school team in the state of North Carolina. So Reggie will be coming into the Eagles program next year. Had several offers, but uh, had liked his uh, campus visit. And so he'll be headed from Greensboro to Durham uh, next year as a potential point guard for the Eagles. I like these kids coming off the bench and hitting their free throws. Right. You know, Wiggins has been to the free throw line a couple times this year, about 21. And he made both of those, as did Guerrero the last time down. Here's Salam with another three ball. The board cleared that time by Michael Wolf. He shot that from two steps beyond the <laughs> NBA three, Charles. Here's CJ between the legs. Little fancy shake and bake. Has it blocked? Don't come in here with that, <laughs> that young weak fella. Stuff. Yeah. Houston, Houston Smith. Houston Smith said, don't come in here with that. Guerrero. Foul. And Guerrero's going to the line as he is foul that time. As he went inside and picking up the foul was Rodney Ross. This is money time for Guerrero. Nice ball fake. Utilize the reverse layup offhand, created the foul. He's showing Coach Moten that I need to be getting some quality minutes. He missed one. <laughs> That just doesn't happen for him. Going through his routine, deep breath, one bounce. Second one's good. Looked really good. He has three points. He was now showing a 2 3 zone to finish this game out. Under a minute, to, under two minutes rather to go. Salam cross court off the hands of Danny Harris freshman out of Fort Lauderdale couldn't handle it. It certainly has not been the Wildcats day. Utilizing the shot clock they won't even try to do anything before 11 or 12 seconds. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Wiggins down the lane. CJ. That's efficient and effective offense. Shot it with four seconds left to go on the shot clock. Central had two games in which they scored over 30. Well, I should say one over 30 points. That was back on December 20. 8th 88 54 victory and a 101 66 victory back to back games they outscored their opponents 189 to 112. Wow. Great charge taking that last time 
by Will Ransom and he's done a very admirable job off the off the bench tonight. Uh, he's got six rebounds just took a charge two for two from the field. Travel. They were rooting for the bench. You look at the bench over there. They root for these right. young guys to come in here. That's Myers McAllister. He's a junior red shirt out of Hillside High in Durham just six games this season and he was trying to get something going and he traveled yeah. in route to he got he's got happy yeah, feet got Charlie it. got happy feet yeah. I got the ball I got a chance he to score to playing, right so he was no, taking the no, ball. he's happy man I got <laughs> I got to get this shot up coach the ran a play for me are you kidding me I'm ready to rock and roll 20 second difference between the game and shot clock shot clock down to 11 seconds now for Bethune Cookman and the Wildcats. Lavelle Moten and Salam was trying to get into that three point range. Lavelle Moten goes seven and four in the tournament. Gravel Craig's record in the tournament goes to six and six right at 500. Uh, they won't even take a shot knowing Lavelle Moten. He won't allow them. No, no. To sh shoot anymore. So that's going to wind up this first round matchup for North Carolina Central. And Bethune Cookman, they fought the good fight on yesterday, but did not have enough left in the tank to counter what North Carolina Central and the Eagles were bringing to the table today. So the final score, 95 to 60, a 35 point victory for North Carolina Central, the number one seed in the tournament. Brandon Tab, one of his few points that he was able to put down tonight for North Carolina Central, but at the other end, you had Big Will Ransom coming up big, as was the player of the year you saw sitting on the bench there in Patrick Cole. So a big win for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. They move on to the semifinal action on Friday here as championship week continues at the scope. For Cy Alexander and the entire crew here in Norfolk, Virginia, this is Charlie Neal saying so long. <laughs>